what's up YouTube today we are running down the top medical school programs in the US and this information is based off of the US News and World Report if you want to learn how they rank their criteria all of their details check out the links in the description but I wanted to share a quick caveat rank does not mean or does not equate best fit right so one of my favorite kind of aspects of my work working with students on their personal statements and secondaries is that they're kind of, I'm part of their respective journeys as they kind of uh, research the best fit, right? Especially when they're writing those like, why us? So like really get to know the programs and really kind of authentically learn what best fit means for them. Hi, I am Dr. Josie. This is Write Your Acceptance. If you are new to our channel, please, please grab your free personal statement guide in the description below. And I have a ton of information here on the writing, but today we're talking top five schools in the nation. All right, let's go. So number five, it is the School of Medicine at Stanford University. They have an application deadline of October 1st. If you wanna know, their application fee is 100 bucks. It is about 62,000 tuition full-time. And they have a pretty kind of on the smaller end program. Their faculty ratio, faculty to students, is uh, 2.3 to 1. They have about a little over a thousand faculty members in their program. So a couple of interesting details about their program. They have a required clerkship curriculum as kind of part of their program and it definitely has breadth. So from ambulatory medicine to critical care to obstetrics, family medicine, that clerkship is required and, and you have real range as to the experiences that you can delve into. They also have something that is relatively new, which is social justice and equity. It is called the social justice and health equity curriculum. So it was brought on a couple years ago in 2020 with the new faculty hire, Dr. Brown, and it has started a very interesting, productive conversation about just kind of like a comprehensive review of the program for health equity, for representation within the program, but then how they serve patients. It is assessing and ideally addressing any gaps in anti-racist education, social justice, health equity, and in their clerkships and in their curriculum. Number four is the College of Physicians and Surgeons at Columbia University. And so here are their details real quick. Application deadline is October 15. The fee is 110. Tuition is uh, just under 65,000. Faculty is, so it's a bigger program than Stanford. Faculty ratio is about 3.8 to one. So definitely a bigger program. And they have just over 2000, so 2200 or so full-time faculty members in the program. One detail that I wanted to mention is they do not have rolling admission. So that is something that I think a lot of um, pre-med students as they're applying keep in mind, but Columbia does not have rolling admission. So it's my understanding that make their decisions at the end of the entire kind of review process and that decisions go out end of March. So a couple things that are of interest in their program, they have what's called a scholarly projects program. It links medical students with faculty members and mentors to explore a very specific niche project. This is from their website. Ideally, it is to create quote unquote new knowledge, right? So we encourage students to select a project that allows for immersion with the hope that this experience will consolidate the learning developed through fundamentals and major clinical year into individual professional passions. One of the things I really appreciate is that they have a kind of protected time for students. So it's about four to 10 months where they are during differentiation and integration where they can kind of complete their scholarly project. A couple of very interesting kind of curricular threads that you can focus on, biomedical informatics, medical decision-making, public health and systems and leadership. Other tidbits, I really feel you get to know um, a program through their kind of community service initiatives. So um, Columbia has some real great ones. Cosmo was created to provide free high quality primary health care to uninsured patients in Washington Heights. They have a global health program. They also have the Columbia Harlem Homeless Medical Partnership, and this is a student run clinic. So a lot of kind of patient centric experience there. Do you want to take a deep dive and learn more about any one of these programs? If you do comment below the name of the program, because I definitely, especially the ones that have like a why us question for their secondaries, I sometimes will do a video on kind of how to write that from evidence-based information from their kind of website and just kind of former students and all that good stuff. So definitely write the name below if you want a deep dive on any of these programs. All right, so number three is Duke, the School of Medicine at Duke University. Application deadline, October 15. 
Application fee, 100 bucks. The tuition is about 61,000. This is a 2.7 to one student to, or faculty to student ratio. They have about 1,300 full-time faculty members. Duke is known for their highly regarded hospital systems. They have three hospitals, Duke University Hospital, Durham Regional, and Duke Raleigh Hospital. They have eight clinical departments and they are ranked kind of top 10 for NIH funding. They do not have rolling admission, which is important to note if you are applying. And according to their website, decisions come out late February. All right, number two, NYU Grossman. Application deadline, October 15. And tuition, yes, is zero. This is full rides for accepted students. I have more information on that on another video if you wanna kind of check that out on kind of why NYU. It is 2.4 to one faculty to student ratio. And there's about a thousand full-time faculty on staff. It has a 2.2 acceptance rate. So it is incredibly, incredibly competitive. But yes, the major draw is that you are attending a world-class program essentially for free. They have a couple different tracks. Okay, for NYU, these are the numbers that they last shared. Applications 9,635 applied. They gave 820 interviews. They matriculated 108 students. So the median GPA was 396. The median MCAT score was 522. The acceptance rate for and the info for NYU Lysome, I don't know how to say that, sorry. I've never heard someone say it, but I've only read it, is about 1.2%, so tougher. For the class of 2024, these were the stats. Applications were 4,332 who applied. They matriculated 24 students, so it's tiny, tiny. And the mean MCAT score was 517. So their goal is to grow the the program but still keep it tiny to be honest grow to 40 students that kind of you know may be interesting to some but incredibly competitive and so number one shocker is harvard again they are not on rolling admission so timing of your application does not affect your your chances this is information from their website they don't have a preference for major right you can major on anything you want as long as you take your science prereqs like most schools my kind of experience they don't pre-screen so you get secondaries for harvard um, automatically and then that means that they have two kind of main deadlines october i'm gonna tell you 15 for the primary app october 22nd for the secondary materials so faculty student ratio is 14 to 1. they have just shy of 10,000 full-time faculty on staff they are number two in anesthesiology, OBGYN, and internal medicine. Like I mentioned, I love to see what programs kind of, how programs focus their energy on community service. So um, these are a couple of their programs. They have the Boston Center for Independent Living, and this is a kind of individual and systemic advocacy uh, group and they kind of explore areas for people with disabilities, including housing, healthcare, employment, long-term care, transportation. One of the reasons why it's just so highly regarded, their slogan is nothing about us without us. So 70% of staff are people with disabilities. Another program is the Boston Healthcare for the Homeless. And so they offer a variety of, of services, inpatient, outpatient services, um, spot support for observation treatment, preventative care, um, drug overdose treatment and prevention dental clinic and then they have the city living vida urbana city life focuses on preventing forced displacement and they do have english and spanish resources available in the description below if you want to kind of learn more about personal statements how i work with students grab your free personal statement guide and that kind of will bring you in to the fold so wel welcome if you want to deep dive on any of these programs please comment the name of the program below so i know that you're interested um, if you found this helpful, give us a like, have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye.